Hi, I'm Tom Anahomi from Dell EMC. In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to install the new Parscale Container Storage Interface driver and deploy a persistent storage application on Kubernetes using the driver. As you can see, I have a three node Kubernetes cluster running version 1.20. In addition, I installed Helm 3.5, which will be used to install the CSI driver. The first step is deploying the external snapshot air pod. We navigate to the official GitHub page and copy the link. Then we download it on the Kubernetes master node and unzip the file. Next, we navigate to the CRD folder and create the three custom resource definitions using the kubectl create command, the volume snapshot class, the volume snapshot content, and the volume snapshot. Now we create the snapshot pod and wait for the pod to start. At this stage, we are ready to install the Parscale CSI driver. We navigate to the official GitHub page, copy the link, and then download it on the Kubernetes master node and unzip the file. We navigate to the Helm folder and copy the following configuration files. Next, we create a new namespace for the driver and start editing the files. We collect information from the Parscale systems like IP address, path, username and password, and add it to the secret.json file. In this example, we use the multi-array support, which allows us to connect two or more Parscale systems to the Kubernetes cluster using the new version of the driver. We run the jq command to validate the syntax of the JSON file, and then we create a secret using the kubectl create secret command. Next, we create the empty secret file for the certificate validation of the endpoint. Parscale CSI driver version 1.5 supports custom networks for NFS IO traffic. This feature allows us to specify custom network for NFS traffic in case we have dedicated networks for management and storage traffic. Here, we edit the values YAML file and set the parameters for the installation. We specify the allowed network and leave all the parameters with the default values. Now, we are ready to install the driver. We run the install script and specify the namespace and the values file. Within a few seconds, the driver is up and running. Starting in Parscale CSI 1.5, the installer does not create any storage classes as part of the driver installation, so we need to create the storage classes manually. As I've mentioned before, I'm about to create the two storage classes. One for my primary Parscale system and the second one for my backup system. We edit the parameters and then create it using the kubectl create command. Next, we create the volume snapshot class and specify the respective storage class Parscale path. At this stage, all the components are installed and we are ready to create some workloads. For the purpose of this demo, I'm going to create a stateful set with a single pod and two persistent volume claims, one from each Parscale system. With access mode set to read write many, which means that these persistent volumes can be shared across multiple pods. We run the kubectl create command to create a stateful set and wait for the operation to complete. As you can see, all the objects are up and running. By navigating to the Parscale user interfaces, we can see that the volumes have been created respectively on each and every system. I really hope you find this demo useful and thank you very much for watching.